Hey, so glad that you're here. I'm Nick. I'm one of the pastors on staff. I've had a full, large, I know they don't call that at Starbucks, uh, coffee, and so I'm caffeinated and full of the Holy Spirit, so I could be, as Pastor Nathan says every once in a while, unhinged this morning, right? So all complaints and concerns, you just want to email me at Jerron at Calvary. No. All right, so uh, a couple things. We wanted to give a Heart for the House update. We've had a lot of people asking, like, hey, we did this whole big thing, and then, like, what's happened? And it's like, a lot has happened. And we just want to do our very best as a leadership team to give proper time for the Lord to move and to get a good update together so that we're not wasting our time. Um, just be honest, right? Because Sunday morning is for preaching and teaching the Word of God and the worship of our Lord. And so we didn't want to always just be cluttering our Sunday morning with a heart for the house updates when there wasn't substantial updates to give. And so this morning there is. Our commitment is to try to give continual updates, let it be monthly, maybe every quarter of where we're at in this process. And just so you guys can hear from me, like, and if in between those times, if you ever have any questions, we want to be just here, ready, and available for any of that. So heart for the house, home for the broken, encouragement for the hurting, and a family for the follower of Jesus. As I was getting ready this morning, just prayerfully thinking through you know, the sermon, what Sunday morning was going to look like, maybe a little bit of my uh, dad heart excited to see my son play, you know, all those, all those emotions going together. And I was just reflecting and saying, Lord, like, where have we been that home for the broken? Where have we been that encouragement for the hurting? And where have we been that family for the follower of Jesus? And he just really kind of overwhelmed me with so many small things, so many great things that we've been able to step into. And I mean, even to say just the last two weeks to be an encouragement to hurting people. And, and we got word that there's more opportunity for us to step into other hurting families that are going through the same sense of grief and loss and because life is real and life is really hard at times. And so it's been just neat to see, even, and the only small shout out I want to give, it was kind of cool, um, there were some teenagers hanging out at my house, because I have teenage kids, and they all come over, we, we do this thing called ice cream night, right, it's a madhouse, I usually tuck away and hide, but one of the teenagers was saying like, hey, I was out skateboarding, and some guy just kind of rolled up on us, and was talking to us about skateboarding, and I invited them to church, and he goes, I don't know if they showed up, but I invited them, I thought, how cool is that? that even in our student ministry at a 15-year-old heart for the Lord has a heart for people. And I was like, that's, that's heart for the house. Because the whole initiative is for people. It is people-focused. That we know God wants to do a work in and through Calvary and, and even with other churches to impact the lake for Jesus. Right? We know the uh, results of that as we keep our eyes on the Lord and what he has for us and focused on other people and their brokenness and their hurting and inviting them to be a part of a family of God, we know that, hey, there's going to be some real tangible things that we have to do to offset what God wants to do. And that is the other part of Heart for the House in the sense of space. And, and honestly, between me and you, let me give you a small little transparent moment in my heart. There's so many things for the past couple of years that I've wanted to do as the pastor of the church. There's so many little things that the Lord has hit me with, and I kept pushing back on the Lord and said, oh, I'd love to do that, but we don't have the space to do it. And so I looked at Jerron in the last six months, and I said, you know what? Like, the Lord's really been convicting me. Like, I'm done telling the Lord no. I'm done not doing good ministry just because we don't have the space for it. Now, is it going to be clunky at times? Oh, absolutely. You're probably thinking, well, what is he thinking about? You'll see. You'll notice. And then, you know. But it just, just that heart to say, Lord, this, this is where we're at, and this is what you have for us, and we want to fully honor you and be used by you through it, regardless of our space. But in that, we are trying to accommodate and look at how do we have more space for what God wants to do in and through us. And so I just want to say thank you to everybody that is giving above and beyond their normal tithe and offering and unto the heart for the house building fund. And I just want to say thank you for that. It has been just so amazing to sit back and see how the Lord has moved in that. And we never want to manipulate people. We never want to force 
We just want to present what God is doing and invite you in to be a part of that. You know, like I, there, there's some things that I'm just not going to be a part of, like Cal Kids. Like I, I'm kind of busy on a Sunday morning, so I can never be in there, but I want to support that the best way that I can. Or some of you are like, I'm never going to go to student ministry and be a life group leader, right? And praise the Lord. But there's a way you can be a part of that and support that. And so the same thing even within the heart for the house. I just want to say thank you for your giving. It's been really amazing to see. And as the pastor and, and leading the board and we have the campus development team, the campus stewardship team, we really are committed to being good stewards in honoring Jesus with what his worship money is, not just in heart for the house, but in everything that we do. You know, your giving makes the ministry here possible and the things that we're able to do and the life transformation, the families that we get to step into, an opportunity for those to, again, find a home that are broken. They can find encouragement, those people that are hurting and they feel like they have nowhere else to go and they can find a family here at Calvary. And so we just want to say thank you guys for that. Now, within the Heart for the House, we have made some site adjustments. Obviously, you see a whole lot of crazy dirt work out here, right? Like that's my inner five-year-old with Tonka trucks and be like, I've asked, I think, on a weekly basis if they'll let me run the machines. They keep saying no. I don't know why. I just don't understand. But there's a lot of things that are going. And so we, as the board, we've made a decision to kind of pare down the plan, but we're still able to hit all of our goals for what the heart for the house is. And if you remember, some of the big spacing issues that we have is sanctuary, foyer, you know, our glorified hallway out there, Cal Kids, parking, and students. Students have no space whatsoever. And when I talk about Cal Kids, think about it this way. I, I brought it up to a board member, and he's like, ever since you said that, that's been really impactful. You should share that. And so, like, think of an average-sized home, you know, around 2,000, 2,500 square feet, right? Not an average-sized home, some a little bit more, some a little bit less, but I would say average, a basic home, 2,200 square foot, right? Could you imagine 80 kids coming to your house on a Sunday morning that's what Cal Kids is like, that we only have about 2,000 square foot. So you got to put kids in the tub, you got to put them in the laundry room, you got to lock a couple in the closet, you know, like you got to use all available space, and that's really what our Cal Kids is at. And so we are trying to move through and do the best that we can as a staff seeking the Lord, but hey, how do we accommodate what he is doing with what we have? And so we've, we've made the decision to pare down the plan, but still able to hit our goals. We know that the plan can be more involved later. A big heart for us at the board level is we want to hand off a better Calvary. You know, so like the next generation, if the Lord tarries, we want to try to handle some of those issues that if the Lord continues to do a work and continues to grow, that we've almost done a little bit of heavy lifting in planning and, and have forward thinking in it. <clears throat> Think of David. You know, he wanted to have everything, King David wanted to have everything together because he knew it wasn't his responsibility to build the house for the Lord. And he wanted to, but the Lord said, no, you got too much blood on your hands, but it'll be your son. So he wanted to have the plan and everything together for it. So I think in a similar way, we want to be able to hand off a better Calvary. So there is some stuff that is, could be more involved later, but right now we're willing to make adjustments to get us where God is leading. Right? And that's the key thing, adjustments. Um, it's not actually one of the Beatitudes, uh, but I think in ministry, it's one thing that we need to learn. Blessed are the flexible, for they will never break. Right? And the moment that we get rigid and we think everything is set in stone, that's when the Lord, I think, just loves to say, that's cute, and pats us on the head and then breaks our plans. But is our hope in our plans? Is our hope in our experience? Is our hope in what our wisdom is? or as our hope in the Lord. So as a board, as a campus development team, as a stewardship team, we're not trying to figure this thing out. We're trying to walk by faith in this. And, and I know for, uh, in very realistic numbers, the campus development team has put in over a thousand hours making sure and doing their due diligence to this plan and so when we say blessed are the flexible, that, and so there's been some adjustments. So if you remember, like when we first kind of talked about it, we had some stuff up. We had a couple of the, you know, pictures out in the foyer. 
So those have been updated, and you want to check those out, and we even moved where it's at. So as you're walking out of the foyer, if you go to the right, uh, don't go into the women's bathroom, unless you're a woman, right? We're not that kind of church. Um, <clears throat> sorry. <laughs> I told you I have a lot of caffeine in me. But between the women's bathroom and the upstairs staircase, that is going to be our heart for the house wall. So there's a couple blueprints that are up. It has the topographical study and the site map. And then you'll see one of these. And so the adjustments moving forward is instead of building into this side uh, hill over here that's like a 30-foot drop of craziness, um, we're going to go out just a little bit, and it's going to be a one-level slab. Um, and there'll be a sanctuary. Then you can see the lobby below it. And then Cal Kids would be on the side of that. And so that'll be a whole separate building from here. One of our hearts is we would love not to have to do any kind of renovation to this facility um, because some of the cost with it and things that are happening. So that is, that is the plan moving forward. That is the preliminary floor plan. There'll probably be some little adjustments, that, um, but that is from uh, the architect engineer that we have hired for this. And so um, after service, the campus development team and the stewardship team, a member from each will be out by the, that wall. So if you have any questions, we would love to talk to you about that. And so that's kind of the blueprint that we're looking at. Um, and we also know that phasing of this project is very needed. So let me walk you through the phasing of what we're looking at. So phase one, we've cleared all the trees, so that's done. We're doing some site uh, infrastructure. Uh, we need to put in a new septic system. Um, the septic system that we have right now is uh, beyond its capacity, right? And I think that's super important. I think our neighbors think that that's super important that we have a good septic system, right? So there will be a, a new septic system that'll be underground, and, and so we'll have this field out there, but that'll go under it. And then we need a well and a pump house because uh, the new facility will have to have a sprinkler system because of its uh, size. And all of that needs to be done before we step foot into building new. And, and to say, like, some people have asked, like, well, why don't we just add on to this facility? Why, you know, one of the things is we would still need both of those things, a new septic system and the well pump house, because if we added even one square foot to this facility, we would have to retroactively sprinkle this, which is super expensive. And again, trying to be good stewards and honor the Lord with what he has for us. So that is phase one. Um, some of the area out there that you've seen the dirt work, go back to phase one, don't skip it yet. Um, I'm not done. So some of the area out there, we have raised the dirt 14 feet. Like that is crazy. And it's engineered fill, so there's a certain process that they go through. Every six inches, they're packing it down so that it is done right and it could hold a, a facility, a building upon it. And so the, all of phase one is $1.1 million. And like, that's just crazy. That's a lot of infrastructure, right? It's not just like going out, clearing a little bit of land, and let's pour some concrete. There's a lot of infrastructure that needs to take place. So that, that's phase one. Now, phase two, um, if you can, I don't know who's controlling this. Uh, you are, okay. Oh, upstairs is. Go to the blueprint for me, if you would. Go back to the blueprint. So we want to phase out the construction for this. Um, we have talked to engineers, architects, we've talked to the general contractors, we've talked to a metal building company that we would be using, and it would be cost effective for us to shell, to buy uh, and build the whole shell of the whole facility, right? Pour the concrete and it'd be one building, but we will phase out the construction inside of it. So phase one will, or I'm sorry, phase two of the construction would be that whole facility, but we would only finish out the sanctuary and the lobby and then those bathrooms. All of the new Cal Kids would be actually phase three. And so in that phasing, you're probably thinking, well, we got some young families here. So we go down there and go to church and we bring our kids up here. We would for temporarily allow Cal kids to have the whole downstairs of this facility. And yeah, like even in the w winter time and weather's not the greatest, like we're gonna have to bring our kids up here to check them in and then go back down there for church. Yes, that out of all of the pinch points that we have seen and all of the different options that we are looking at for a new facility, that is the least uh, invasive and the least pressure point for us. Is it ideal? No. And I'm not going to stand up here and be like, oh, it'll be fine. Like, my wife is like, I, as a mom, my mom's heart, like, that would be hard for me. I'm like, I know it is. But 
when we look at all options, we do believe this is the best option moving forward in that. And so that would be phase two. So now you can go back to phase two. So phase two would be 1.7. Um, our goal is to at least to get to that phasing. So all in would be 2.8 million dollar. We have the infrastructure of 1.1 and then the building again. Ballpark numbers, these are not me, Moses, coming down from Mount Sinai with stone tablets written by the finger of God. Embrace the ish. Blessed are the flexible. But for where we're at today, these are the best numbers that we are seeing. And so that would be phase two. And then phase three would be to finish out the Cal Kids space. We would get them to 6,000 square feet. That new facility would be done. And then the whole downstairs of this would turn into Cal students, which we would love to have. Z would love to have his own space. And then upstairs would be, you know, for staffing and to some fellowship space. It probably wouldn't change a whole lot whatsoever in its usage. Now, what we do know in the phasing of that is with the board and the advisement of the campus development team and the stewardship team, we will never step foot into the next phase if we do not see financial responsibility to make that happen. So if we're done with phase one of the infrastructure and the dirt work and, and development, we're ready to start phase two, but financially we're not, we will wait upon the Lord until we see financial responsibility to move forward in that. Uh, we have no heart to put the church under such a debt that would hinder our day-to-day -day operations. But you might be thinking, well, what happens if we keep growing? If you didn't know, last Sunday was our largest non-holiday Sunday. It was absolutely packed. All three services, cow kids, like we had to throw kids out the window just to make, no, we really didn't do that, just to make more space. Like, but that's because we want to be good stewards in honoring Christ with the financial responsibility. So we will not move forward in the next phasing until we feel as a board secure financially to be able to make that happen so that we don't put the church under a heavy debt. Make sense? And so if we sit at this phase and it's like, hey, we would love to, but again, we want to operate as good stewards. So that's kind of the phasing of it. And so where are we at currently? So we got some updates for you. So it was a 4.5 million with the previous plan that we had posted in there. Again, the site adjustments, everything. Uh, the best numbers that we have, we're looking at about a 3.7 all in. But again, we would love to phase that out. And so where are we at to date? <clears throat> this is as the end of July, since we started kind of the, the official launch in May. And just want to say thank you. There was a, uh, quite a few of you that started giving even before. Like we did the very beginning in January, and we did the sermon series, This Doesn't Make Sense. And people started jumping on board before we even really kind of pulled the trigger to a capital campaign. And we just want to say, like, thank you for that faithfulness. And even if you started in May, Thank you for that faithfulness. So we have received in, in actual monies and pledges uh, $938,968. That's where we are at. Yes, thank you. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> I have four pastors that have done at least two up to four different building uh, phases in their tenure as pastors, and so sort of leaning on their wisdom a lot. And so a couple of them had called back and said, hey, give me some updates. Where are you guys at? And I said, well, we've raised almost a million in three months. And they're like, that is so amazing. Like they were so encouraged by that. And obviously all of us can do basic math. You just take a couple of the zeros off and it, it's easier to do. There's still a need. But we know this isn't a three-month thing. We know this isn't a six-month thing. Like, this is a big work that the Lord is doing that we are committing to for the next few years. You know, this isn't just like, hey, the students need a couple little things. Can we scrape together? Like, no, this is a big move that God is doing in and through us. And so there is still need before us. And so I s still challenge that if you uh, are giving, keep praying powerfully for the Lord to work in this. If you haven't, I just ask you to pray and consider, do you want to be a part of what God is doing here at Calvary as we continue to be a home for the broken, an encouragement for the hurting, and a family for the follower of Jesus? A couple ways you can jump in on that. Um, some of you are giving, and you haven't filled out one of those cards. Um, those really help us understand that if we need to take any kind of loans and do some debt, uh, banks want to know what our congregation is pledging to, and that'll help us understand a commitment to it. 
Um, so if you're giving and you haven't filled one of those out, would you just fill one out so we know like what you are committing to? Again, um, do not want to force anybody to give. All I ask scripturally, and this is what the Bible tells us, whatever the Lord has put on your heart, and I believe all of us that call Calvary home, that this is our home church, if all of us faithfully respond unto the Lord, whatever that number is, that's what the Lord wants to see. Well, where's the rest of it going to come from? What did we just sing? Did we just give lip service to the Lord and say that, oh yeah, we're going to sing you will provide, but we really don't believe it. We're going to sing that you can do far more than we, we could ever understand, that you are more than able, but we really don't believe that. And that's why I, I literally look at Pastor Nathan and I said, I want to sing this song. Who am I to deny what the Lord can do? Right? So absolutely believe in the power of God, but still the responsibility that he invites us in to be a part of that. So if you haven't filled out a card, um, haven't jumped into it, I just challenge you. You know, just the prayer. I have one small little prayer. Last slide, please. <sighs> How do you want me to be a part of this? Lord, you're doing a work. How do you want me to be a part of this? And so if you need a, a one-on-one, a sit down with the campus development or the stewardship team um, or me, we would love to sit down and give you all the info that we can because you know, there's a little bit more details than we can give on a Sunday morning like this. But this is our update where we're at. I'm hoping that the Cal Connect, that's a monthly newsletter that I write kind of from the pastor's heart. I want to put some updates at the bottom of that every month. And then at least quarterly, we'll be getting up and we're like, hey, this is where we're at. And this is, our, this is what the Lord has done, and this is the need moving forward, but this is the heart for the house. So if we can, just want to take a moment to pray over this whole process, and then we'll jump into the word. So if you would, pray with me. Father, we love you. We trust you, Lord. We just thank you for how you are moving in and through us. And Lord, this is a walk of faith. And there's times it doesn't make sense to us. But we just want to be found faithful to your leading, your guiding, Lord, knowing that there are still people living in their brokenness, living in their hurt, living as orphans and widows without a family of faith, without a saving relationship with you. Lord, I'm asking, use us here at Calvary in a mighty way that we wouldn't just say kingdom before Calvary, Jesus over everything, Lord, that we would live that, that we would seek first your kingdom and what you are doing And if we would focus on your kingdom, Lord, we believe and we trust that you'll take care of Calvary. And so we hold out our lives to you. We hold out our time, our treasure, our talents. Lord, we've been crucified with you. And the life that we now live, we live by faith in you. And so use us. Let us be a useful vessel in how you are moving and working to impact the lake for Jesus. Give us that kind of faith, Lord. We pray this in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. Amen.